Hello, welcome. This is Jensen Vars and today we are going to cover uh, the Mythic GME Tools module for Foundry VDD. We are going to review super quickly what Mythic Game Master Emulator is for those who don't know it. And also we're going to focus a little bit more into how to use the module in Foundry to play it. So this is the book G Mythic Game Master Emulator by World Mill Games. It's only 50 pages and the amount of value in there is I cannot recommend it enough. So basically as uh, an emulator system what it's composed of it's two main parts. One part is an oracle. So an oracle in solo games it's a question answering mechanism. It's, it's how we as players interact with the game so it comes back at us with answers and kind of tell us where our fate goes. The second part is more about how we structure the game and Mythic has tons of guidelines into structuring an adventure. So this is the first part, what's called the Oracle. In the blue book, the Oracle is a yes or no question answering engine that has basically a probability of being right or wrong. So we as players, we have to make questions about the game, about our story, about what do we see, about what there is, about who a person is or what is he doing. Uh, but the questions we phrase in the blue book is uh, has to be capable of being answered with a yes or no. So, for example, is he behaving properly? Uh, is there any treasure in the room? Um, is there someone here? So it's uh, we have to separate that part a bit out of the RPG because simultaneously we're going to use our own RPG system in order to make the checks or play with our characters as an RPG. So, for example, we have we can check um, if we ask the game master emulator um, could there be someone in this room and the answer is yes then maybe we can start rolling spot for example or listen and so on and so forth the fate chart has odds so we as players define it because when we ask a question we kind of know how likely that the answer is uh, but also there is a chaos rank something that we lose out of control and kind of shifts these probabilities the second part is a bit how the game is guided and one core component of the game are the random events. So random events can happen in a plethora of circumstances that the book elaborates when exactly they happen. Um, a very good example is actually the first at the beginning of um, the story when we really don't know where the story begins. Usually random event is a starter point, but also scenes can be altered or random events can happen as we roll dice, even when asking questions. The blue book suggests um, to conjugate an action and a subject, as you see on the screen, where an action can is usually a verb like break, heal, divide, refuse, and we conjugate it with a subject like good, uh, pain, failure, success. So we get answers like divide, uh, plans and then we have to make that interpretation so that's a bit how the mythic game master emulator provokes the player into kind of telling him what happens and it's about the context the premise of the game we're playing that we make that interpretation and decide what happens but also we can counter attack with questions and go back to the oracle in order to clarify those topics first thing we do is enable the module not going to do it because it's already enabled here. We have to open the compendium, go to Mythic GME Macros, and um, there will be uh, this, you, you will be able to see this macro. So in the order of importance, I would say the fate chart is the first one, that is the Oracle. It opens a pop-up, we state a question. Is he behaving accordingly? So by default, the chaos rank is going to be, it starts at five, but if you modify it through the macro, it's going to change the default value. However, you can override it in case you might need. And here you have to choose the odds. How likely is what you're asking true? So for example, is he behaving accordingly and he's someone who we know and he usually behaves, then we can say, okay, that's likely. That's going to roll against the fate chart and it's going to tell us the answer in the chat quite descriptively. The second macro is a random event. So that, as we know, might either happen at the beginning of the game under certain circumstances on the fate chart, like when there are when we roll doubles or also when a scene is interrupted for some reason. Uh, so when we roll 
random event. It also opens a pop-up. We can say why are we rolling, for example, the beginning of Joy's story, whatever. And each random event in Mythic has a focus, basically, who is this random event targeted to. Um, the book explains each one of them very clearly. By default, it's a random value, but in some circumstances, you might want to choose uh, what is the focus of the random event. We leave it random, uh, which is the default option. We roll submit, and it says, for example, the focus is, OK, an event happens that moves us towards a thread. So it's an event that's related to a quest we're doing. The action is abuse, and the subject is weapons. So something towards the story we're playing triggers an event that in which someone, something or whatever is abusing the weapons they have. The third one is a scene alteration. This we have to check at the beginning of each scene to see if the scene approaches in the way we are planning its approach. For example, we say, okay, our character gets into the car to drive after the robbers of a bank. But first we need to check for a scene alteration. It's impacted by the chaos rank and that's also automatically calculated. And it's going to tell you whether the scene was altered or interrupted. So the details of that are in the book. I think I'm not going to be able to explain it better than the book, but this is what this macro does. The one, the last one is formatted message. So this is an optional one. You click it, it opens a box. You can choose who says something. Uh, it's going to basically format a text for you in that color with that format. Finally, something that's really important in the mythic books is the bookkeeping. And let's take a look at how I recommend doing that. First of all, the book says after each scene, make sure to update the characters list you have to, to keep track of all of the actors involved so far in your story. Second is make sure to have a list of all open threads, uh, basically quests or story lines that you have open. And third is make or take good notes about the scenes that you're going through. So let's begin. My recommendation for a characters list is a, a table, a random table, because the game in many times, in many occasions, is going to tell you that something happens to or from an NPC and you're, you'll have to roll randomly which character. The way to do it is directly creating a random table. So you go to here, create random tables, you put characters and here you start adding everyone you know in your story. The second table would be the threads exactly the same as the characters concept we just come here and say okay rescue aldana i don't know um recover the ring etc so also applies the same rules some occasions in the game might say okay move towards a thread which thread maybe you have then for these scenes what i recommend is a journal entry and how so my so far my the format i've been practicing is a three columns table so you create three columns in the journal entry. One is the scene name, so it has to be something that you recognize. Uh, the second one is the scene proposal or opening, as you prefer. It's basically what are you intending to do. And since after the proposal we might suffer a scene alteration, it's always a good idea to separate what is the original proposal of the scene from what actually happens, which is the scene outcome. And yet here we only covered the blue book. There is the variations one book, which adds complex questions. So it enhances the oracles to allow for more complicated questions. Uh, it also adds themes and other configuration. Variations two adds even more oracles. So you can even make really, really precise questions about the story. And finally, there are 12 magazines that expand the system further. So there's a lot in there to play around with. So this is the conclusion of the video. We went through a lot of things, maybe fast, maybe slow. Let me know your feedback, if that makes sense or not, uh, if you liked it or not, or also if you would like to see specific content related to Foundry VDT, Mythic GME tools, which is the topics I'm covering. We can go through different RPG topics, so let me know any ideas you would like me to cover and maybe we can go through them together. So with that, I'm going to wrap up the video, so thank you very much and I'm looking forward to hear your feedback. Bye-bye. <laughs>